Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be doing another Kahoot, and I'm going to be going over sexually transmitted infections. To be more specific, I'm going to be covering chlamydia. So before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video, give it a thumbs up, um, press that red notification button so you'll be notified every single time a new video is released. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Don't forget, I have bookings available for the NGN and Clex review. You can book on my website and also get audio lessons on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. One last thing, don't forget, you guys can find me covering a variety of nursing topics almost every day on my other social media platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay, guys, let's get started. Chlamydia. True or false? Mm -hmm. Sexually transmitted infections are spread through sexual contact with the penis, vagina, anus, mouth, or sexual fluids of an infected person. Is this true or is this false? What do you guys say? True. Very good. Only three people got this wrong. All of these different ways are how you can uh, be infected with a sexually transmitted infection. And when we say STI, I'm talking about both bacteria or viral. Select all that applies. What are some bacterial causes of sexually transmitted infections? Select all that apply. What are some bacterial causes? Chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, genital warts, HIV or AIDS, hepatitis B. The girls are giggling because of the subject matter. Okay, guys, so let's talk about this, the bacterial causes. Chlamydia, yes, chlamydia is a bacterial sexually transmitted infection. So is gonorrhea and so is syphilis. And I'm going to be doing cahoots on all of these because you have to know these STIs. So yes, these are bacterial uh, uh, causes of STIs. Genital warts. Genital warts, this is a sexually transmitted infection, but guess what? It's viral. It's not bacterial. HIV and AIDS also is viral. Hepatitis B is also viral. So when we're talking about bacterial, it's chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis. Select all that apply. Which populations are at highest risk for sexually transmitted infections? Select all that apply. Women, men who have sex with men, adolescents and young adults younger than 25 years of age, men or women in correctional facilities, Victims of sexual assault or people who practice celibacy. What populations do you expect to be at highest risk for sexually transmitted infections? Okay, so let's talk about this. Yes, women. Women are a group of people who are at highest risk for contracting STIs. And I want you to think about it this way whoever is on the receiving end, they are the one who's going to be at highest risk, okay? Women, men who have sex with men, adolescents younger than 25 years of age, men or women who are in correctional facilities, who are in jail, who are in prison, victims of sexual assault. All of these uh, people are at highest risk for contracting uh, sexually transmitted infection. Three people chose celibacy, but no. Actually, those who practice celibacy are at the least risk of contracting a sexually transmitted infection because in order to contract a sexually transmitted infection, you have to have sexual contact. And if you're practicing celibacy, right, your sexual contact will not be as high as those people who are out there just having sex all over the place, right? So it's going to be everybody on this list except for those who practice celibacy. Select all that apply. 
what are high risk behaviors for the transmission of sexually transmitted infections? Select all that apply. What behaviors would place someone at high risk for the transmission of sexually transmitted infections? Multiple sex partners, new sex partners, sexual partners with other sexual partners, sharing of needles, alcohol or drug dependence, inconsistent or incorrect use of condoms. Okay, let's talk about these behaviors. Yep, having multiple sex partners, having more than one sex partner, that is a behavior that will increase your risk of contracting an STI or STD. New sex partners. Sexual partners that have other sexual partners because um, your sexual history is not only with that person you're with right now, but whoever they've been with too because you don't know what they had, right? Sharing of needles. Drug paraphernalia, those needles for drugs or needles, period. Alcohol or drug dependence and inconsistent or incorrect use of condoms. So yeah, the person uses condoms, but only sometimes, or they don't use the condom the correct way. All of this are all of these are behaviors that increase your risk of a transmission. Other than abstinence, what is the best form of prote protection against sexually transmitted infections? Is it the male condom? Is it the female condom? Is it the diaphragm or antibiotics? What is the best form of protection against STDs other than being abstinent? Very good. Most of you guys chose the correct answer and it is the male condom. That is the number one way to protect yourself against STDs aside from being abstinent. True or false? Oral contraceptives are a great option for protection against sexually transmitted infections. Is this true or is this false? Very good. False. What are all oral contraceptives? That's birth control. Can birth control protect you against STDs? No, it can help you not get pregnant, but it's not going to help you not get a sexual transmitted infection, right? You have to have a barrier um, form of protection, such as what? A condom. Very good. Chlamydia is what type of infection? Everyone should get this correct. Is it bacterial? Is it viral? Is it fungal or is it protozoan? Chlamydia. What type of infection is chlamydia? Very good. Most of you guys chose the correct answer. It is a bacterial type of infection. I believe I covered this the first slide and then I kind of asked the question in the second way to see how, who was paying attention. Most of you guys were. Very good. True or false? Ejaculation does not have to occur for chlamydia to be transmitted. Is this true or is this false? Very good. This is true. So you can have sexual contact and the male does not ejaculate yet, but guess what? You can still catch that STD. You can still catch chlamydia. This is true. Does infection with chlamydia confer immunity? Yes. No. Sometimes, or Professor D, I have no clue. I need to read about this. Very good. No, it does not confer immunity. So you know how if you're a nurse and you're caring for a patient with chicken pox and you've had chicken pox already, you're good. You've already had chicken pox. It confers immunity. You're not going to get it again, right? That's not how it works with chlamydia. You can be reinfected over and over and over again. So you have chlamydia, you get your antibiotics, right? And then 
you have unsafe sex and you catch chlamydia again and you can catch chlamydia again and again and there are some serious uh, complications that come with this disease so it's very important um it, you, to teach the patient if they do get chlamydia you got to teach them how to protect themselves from being reinfected because infection does not confer immunity true or false the clinical manifestations for chlamydia is the same for men and women. The signs and symptoms that you see in a man are the same signs and symptoms that you're going to see in a woman when it comes to chlamydia. Is this true or is this false? Very good. False. The signs and symptoms are going to be different. They're not going to be the same. And the thing is with chlamydia, um, very often the patient will be infected and they'll be asymptomatic. They won't even exhibit any signs and symptoms. However, when they do exhibit signs and symptoms, I think that's the next screen we're going to go over. There are specific things that you will see when they exhibit the signs and symptoms. True or false? Men with chlamydia will experience dysuria or urethral discharge women may experience symptoms of cervicitis. So if a man has um, clinical manifestations, you may see dysuria or urethral discharge. And if the woman has it, you may see signs of cervicitis. Is this true or is this false? Very true, very good. What's the most common complication of chlamydial infection is in women? Is it mucopurulent discharge? Is it painful intercourse? Is it dysuria? Or is it pelvic inflammatory disease? The most common, co I can't speak. The most common, you guys know I can't speak. The most common complication of chlamydia. That was a tongue twister. And it's PID pelvic inflammatory disease. Now, this is like inflammation of the reprodu reproductive organs. And the reason that this is so serious, guys, this can cause the woman to be infertile, especially if she's had uh, multiple occurrences. Now, if the chlamydia is very bad, it doesn't even take more than once. Just that one time of the PID can cause her to be infertile, but everyone's different. So it's very important that you teach a patient how to prevent getting chlamydial infection, and if they do, how they need to get treated as soon as possible to avoid pelvic inflammatory disease. That's a complication. Select all that apply. The preferred treatment for chlamydia infection is a single dose of blank or blank for seven days. Choose two answers. What are the two medications that you think are going to be, or you expect to be uh, prescribed to the patient with a chlamydia infection? They have to take this medication for seven days. Amoxicillin, fibromycin, cephalexin, azithromycin. What do you guys say? It's fibromycin or azithromycin, one or the other. Okay. And again, they're going to take it for seven full days. Patients should abstain from sexual contact for how many days after treatment and until all the sexual partners have completed their full course of antibiotics? Is it going to be three days, seven days, 10 days, or 14 days? Seven days, guys, not two weeks. Most of you guys chose 14 days. It's seven days for a whole week. So after they've completed that full course of treatment, which is what? Seven days, right? They need to um, abstain from sexual activities for a whole seven days. And guess what? Their partners as well. Their partner has to complete that whole um, um, course of antibiotics as well. Seven days. True or false? Last question. Partners of people with chlamydia can be given a prescription for treatment without being seen, without being examined. Is this true or is this false? The partners of the person with chlamydia, they can be given a prescription for treatment without being examined. True or false? True. 
It is true. And let me tell you why. The infection rate for chlamydia is so high that um, when a patient presents to you and they're diagnosed with chlamydia, you give them that prescription for antibiotics and legally you can well, the nurse practitioner or the doctor or, you know, the, the PA, the healthcare prescriber, legally, absolutely, they can and are encouraged to provide an antibiotic prescription for the partner as well because the reinfection rate is so high. Okay, guys, thank you for watching this review. And don't forget, you guys can catch me on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook um, almost daily covering a variety of other nursing topics. And I also have booking spots available on my website for the new NCLEX that is coming out April 1st. Website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching. You guys catch me on the next video.